so let's move. So we, we also spoke about the role of a UI UX designer. And then we spoke about the fact that, you know, we conduct a search, try to know what, you know, the user likes, the pinpoint, their behavior, what they like, what they don't like. You know, and then we try to understand every bit of the things that we need to understand about the user. And then we talked about the skills that as a UI UX designer that you need to know or that you will have to, you know, have at your at your fingertips. All right. So and then we spoke about Sketch, Figma and uh, Adobe XD. So and I told you that personally for me, I'm using Figma. So it, and also that's what I'm actually using to present to every one of us. So you can see that Figma is even very much you know flexible. All right. So and then so today, like I said, <coughs> sorry. So today, like I said, yeah, today we're going to be looking at what the design process the design process so let's let's move to the design process all right so i said that the ui ux design process follows a structured approach to create effective and user-centered designs so let me take that again so i said the ui ux design design process follows a structured approach to create to create effective and user centered design just like we've established last time do you get so i said let's explore the key stages of design processes so one of the things that we're looking at in this aspect tonight or part of the things that we're going to be looking at is the fact that in every design that we create there are processes there are different stages that you know we go through before you know we come to the conclusion that okay this is what we want to create this is how we want to you know this is how we want to do all of the things we are doing all right so the first one the first thing we look at whenever you want to anything any interface is that you need to conduct research you need to conduct research so what's research all about so in this research so there are a number of things that we do there so three major things that i was able to capture enough that we do is that the first thing is that we conduct user research to understand user needs behavior and pinpoints like i said yesterday is that before you create anything we make research we go through a number of research to ensure that um, what we are creating is that we are solving problem remember i said it yesterday that if you are not solving any problem then there's no need for you to design anything at all do you get it now so we need to you know understand the user's need we need to understand their behavior okay this is how range of 13 to 21 behave 40 to clinical behave do you get it now so all of those things are very 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 essential in your design process so another thing we go through in research is that we gather insight through methods such as interviews surveys and user testing yeah we actually you know get to interview users all right then to ask you let's say i'm working for a company that deals with let's say i'm working for a company like udemy how many of you are familiar with udemy do you guys know what udemy is or have you been able to come across udemy let me spell that for us udemy all right so look at me has come across it before udemy yes so udemy is um it's an online or uh we like put the word now is is an online platform whereby you, could, you can get any course that you are looking for any course you are looking for i've been privileged to get a number of courses from them yeah i've learned quite a number of things from them you get it now so 
before I became a designer, I was I was into front end at first. Then I came into designing proper. I just found out that that wasn't really really my thing. Do you get? But then I still have the mind to learn front end, even though I'm actually into front end sort of because as a UI UX designer, you are more about you know the interface, the front end part. So it's always one of the very nice things to go into because you, through the knowledge of your user interface and your user experience, you can be able to create wonderful things for your in in developing any kind of you know product. So another thing is so we create interviews, we create interviews, try to reach out to you know humans people that you know you know that they they use your product you reach out to them you know you even conduct surveys i i don't know how many of us have been able to have been privileged to um, go through some surveys and then you know you were you were giving and a token some they give tokens after going through a survey why some they don't do you get it now so all of those things that they do is to is to try to understand you the user that uses it so using they don't want to they don't we, we try to remove the concept of assumption that's one of the very key thing we do we try to remove the concept of assumption we don't want to assume because when you keep assuming you will not know where you are faulty and then based on your assumption you will count it that you are perfectly fine whereas your assumption is costing somebody else are you getting it now so you mustn't too much go through the even in your day-to-day -day personal life you shouldn't you know box yourself in you know assumption assumption is not too good living on assumption is not too good personally all right so you must ensure that everything you are doing you know you are calculating and you are sure about the things you are doing all right so i said another thing on that research is that we create user personas and then empathy maps to develop a deep understanding of the target you know audience so that's one of the very crucial thing is that we create user but we try to understand the user try to know so much about the user know the heat maps what they like what they use the most do we get it now and then we understand them deeply. So when wherever we see that it is their main emphasis, all right, in this part of research, whenever we're doing user personas or usability testing, is the fact that, or interviews with users, is that we try to, you know, twist the question, the question that you've asked them, the plain questions, try to change it, change the synonyms, and then try to, you know, interview them. We found out that that's where you are able to get so much of the things that they didn't want to say because sometimes you, you might meet up with the user that doesn't really really like to express his or herself all right so it's always best you know you try to find as much information as possible so another thing we go through in design process before we come up with the real thing you're actually after that is the user interface is that is what i did should ideation so ideation is that we brainstorm remember i spoke about this yesterday remember how many of us remember i spoke about this how many of us how many of us can I remember when i spoke about you know design when i spoke about empathize ideation and the remaining three how many of us can I remember I many of us can remember I spoke about that. All right, so ADBC says she do. Yes, very good, very good. So can you, ADBC, can you try to list the remaining? I've listed to empathize, ideation. So there's the, there are three more, there are three more. So who, who can try? Anybody, anybody can try, not just ADBC now. Olua Kolimi can try, Shego can try. So I can do that, okay, true, true. You guys follow through yesterday's class. So I'm with you. So I'm listening.
okay define yes very good prototype and test very good very good very good very good very good very good that's very very awesome it means you paid so much attention to yesterday's class all right so who else can try again who else want to give it a try that can leave that can list the o5 now so look at me alpha try listing the o5 or oh, share and check one too so are we seeing for both of you <laughs> i was scared did not remember uh no don't for my hand don't for my hand don't for my hand Hmm? Look at my hand. You are my very good friend yesterday's class. I was using you a lot for examples. Well, what will you to leave me on hanging? Don't leave me on hanging. No. <laughs> All right. So, you guys still have the video yesterday. You can go through it again. All right. It's a continuation of today's class. So you see that I've been making references to yesterday, 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 because if you don't understand, you say, can't remember. <laughs> it's all right. So you see that if you don't have the bedrock of the information that was shared yesterday, you will be deficient of um, today's class because you, I was, I'm still trying my possible best to still, you know, try to remind you guys of what I did yesterday. Yeah, for your benefit, that's one of the very key thing about teacher is that you must try as much as you can even though you are trying as much as you can the student also must also try to you know do that too under ideation is that we brainstorm and generate ideas based on research findings you see now so it is based on um, the things we've done in number one in point one which is what research that's how we're able to you know, brainstorm and generate what ideas from the word ideation we have what ideas so another thing is that under this ideation is explore different concepts and solutions to address user needs. So we explore different design concepts and solutions. So we, we try to bring out, you know, how can we solve this problem? You know, in your research, all you are after is you are trying to know what the problem. That's what you are trying to do. They are trying to know the problem that you have or that the users are because any problem that the user have you also have it too why because it's your product so you are trying to solve the user's problem so from whatever you have from the user research is what you get is how you are able to you know brainstorm ideas on how to sort that problem out so another thing is that Collaborate with team members and stakeholders to encourage diverse perspectives. That's why it's always very awesome. You know, you sit with a board of people in your company and then you guys are able to come up with, okay. So that's why you must, as a designer, you must be open to suggestions. You must be. Because one of the key things I found out in as a designer is that the way you think is how you design. So you must be willing and have a teachable heart for you to be able to grow because if you don't have a teachable art you cannot grow in the design world because the design world is actually increasing and getting wider and wider so there is no there's no room for snoozing <laughs> so if you are still with me say there's no room for snoozing type in there that there's no room for what for snoozing all right so you have to keep up keep up keep up keep up keep up are you getting it now so you must be able to you know hear from other team members okay what do you think about this this is a problem that we have how can we solve it do you get it now you see that everything we'll be talking about we'll never move to the fact that okay let's start doing practicals because the practical aspect is the final stage it is not really the final stage it's the second to the last final stage because the final stage is that you know you produce and then you are testing the product so before you get there, there are a number of things we need to do. So that's what we're trying to you know, understand. All right. So do you guys understand point one and point two? Do we? Or would you like me to explain it? Explain further. So let me wait for us before moving to point three, because there are still two more or three more other. All right, okay. She promised to go back. Really, really, I think when you are done, 
you can reach out to me on in my dm do you get that to work for you all right so good i think i have two responses so so hasn't responded since but then i'm sure you are listening to me probably you are jotting down maybe that's why so number three is prototyping so under prototyping we create you know low fidelity wireframes or prototypes to visualize the user interface and um, interactions so wireframe let me show you what wireframe looks like wireframe is just like you know before have you been to a place where they are building a house before or in a construction site you found out that whenever they are designing something they have what they look at you get there is a drawing a sketch of what they are trying to do so that's more or less like our own wireframe you know it's 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 not the perfect one it's not the original one it's just it's not it's not even having colors at all it's just black and white or ash or gray anyone just like that and they were just trying to just put the blocks the shapes every element there just to give a view of what we are trying to create how it should look like sometimes the way we have the wireframe we might ended up with my hand up sorry we might end up not having the exact it's just like you are trying to bring out okay this is possible this is the possible way the design the final design is going to look like do you get so that's what you know low fidelity um wireframe really is and then try to show it out so another thing we do on this prototype is use design tools like sketch figma and adobe xd to translate designs into tangible design uh, tangible into tangible designs do you get now so we we try to now bring it out and all of those things what we've done in our wireframe ensuring that the key how it's going to be perfect so another thing is i treat and refine prototypes based on feedback and usability testing so what you've done from your point one and your point two is how you are going to get your point three so without your research and your list of brainstorm ideas you cannot be able to do great wonders or great job your prototype so you see that your point one and point two are very 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 important without your research you will not solve a lot of problems you just keep creating things for yourself rather than solving problems so it means you're causing more problems it's either you're causing more problems or you're solving problems it's actually it's actually what one of it so number four is conduct use it, it no sorry number four is testing 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 so remember number one is what research number two is what ideation number three is what prototyping and number four is what testing all right so testing is that we conduct usability testing to evaluate the effectiveness and usability of the design we test it with real users and then that's where we now do a or b testing we compare our design with another design let's say you want to create a an e-commerce website now you need to so let's say you want to create an e-commerce you need to check you know um site like jumia you need to check site like alibaba um and then aliexpress you need to check all of those websites okay how do they do the ads so that you are because whatever this is it you must ensure that whatever or this is what the things you must know there's nothing you want to create in this world that someone out there hasn't created someone someone there has created what you're trying to create are you getting it now someone out there has created it so you must ensure that you are you make your research look at how others did this and then not like you're copying but that you are looking at it as a guide then you know you know flow with your ideas and how all of these things need to work out so you gather feedback from user to identify areas forward for improvement do you get now so like i said a or b testing said we use a or b testing or other quantitative method to validate design decision i've just explained a or b testing it's it's a technique that we use in design to 
um, to, 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 to compare, we compare and then we contrast designs together. Do you get that? So number five, which is more than the last one, is iteration. Iteration, 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 iteration. So remember, let's go again. The first one is what? Search. The second one is what? Ideation. The third one is what? Prototyping. And the fourth one is what? Testing. The fifth is what? Iteration. So under iteration is we analyze feedback and data-driven insights to iterate and refine the designs. So we also make necessary adjustments based on user feedback, stakeholder, input, and usability testing. Another thing we do is continuously iterate and refine the design throughout the, what, the development process. So that's everything. So one of the things I iteration, even from the word iteration, is that we 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 continuously it's a continuous thing, something that is looping, right? Something that keeps going around the circle and all of those things. So the ideas you have you gotten. You try to work it out, test it again, test it again, test it again, test it again, till everything is what's perfect. So let's go again. What are the design processes that we have? The first one is what? Research. So you can write it down. I really love everybody to write this down. So like on the chat button, as much as you're writing it in your notes, just, or just yeah, write it on the chat button. It's going to help me as a teacher to understand that okay you are following me all right and i'm not just talking to myself or the hair so the first one is what research the second is what I, ideation the third one is what prototyping the fourth is what testing the fifth is what iteration very good so yeah it's a visual you know explanation of what i just finished seeing now so under understand that is what under your research so what do you do? user persona you say i spoke about that competitive analysis user interview journey map stakeholder interview tax analysis analysis empathy map market research that's all the, and so much more there's still usability testing there that you need to you know check and all of those things so under ideation we have wireframe paper prototype paper prototype is just like your your hand sketch that's what we call lofi lofi l o i f i that's lofi that's low fidelity do you get it now and then we go through all of those so we have brainstorming we have user flow we have interactive prototype we have sketching you get that's the things that we do we also have what references and when we have mood board so on that test we have survey usability test. Sorry, we have diary study, we have cut sort, we have heuristic evaluation, we have analysis, we have field study, we have AOB test. So under implement, we have UX writing. Yes, under, under the umbrella of product design, we have a number of people there. We have a UX writer. That's the person that helps you to write everything that you need for your design and all of those things. It's not like the person that is going to design, the person that is writing. Many of the times in, in Nigerian companies, it's one man that does all of these things, which can be very, very, very tiring. And, and I mean very tiring. Imagine someone that is doing all of the things I've been mentioning. Yeah, the same person that is doing an interview, reaching out to thousands of people, we are the same person that is coming out with ideas. We are the same person that is writing out, you know, the information that you need for your design. It's, it's not going to be too nice on you. You get it now. So, and then, so let's move down to user research in proper. If you are with me, can you just use an, an, uh, it's an emoji for me to know? Let me use mine. Let me see if I can find my favorite. Uh, all right, so let me use this. All right, 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 all right. Good, 
good see that you guys are following me so user research let's understand what is user research so what is user research i've been making mention about it what is user research user research so here's what it means so user research is a critical step in the ui ux design process as it helps designers to gain a deep understanding of the target users and their needs so let me take that again user research is a critical step in the ui ux design process as it helps designers gain a deep understanding of the sorry can you please mute your mic all right so let's get back sorry for the distraction so user research is a critical step in the ui ux design process as it helps designers gain a deep understanding of the target users and their what and their needs so it means we take a practical and a you know circumspect um steps to ensure that we gain understanding full understanding deep understanding of what the user needs to get so there are a number of things we we take note in user research so number one is what method for gathering insight so as a UI ux designer you must be able to know how you gather your information so here are a number of it so the first one is method for gathering insights so the first is you conduct with interview with users to understand their goals, behavior, and pain point. You know, you won't come up with things like questionnaires to gather quantitative data on user references and opinions. And also, another thing you do is you perform usability testing to observe users interacting with prototypes and identify areas forward for improvement. So the whole goal of everything is about trying to what to solve a problem so in solving a problem you need to make your research all right try to know what people pass through even in fact even in the world of science before you come up with anything new it's wise and it is efficient of you to check and go through a series of you know research to ensure that what you are trying to do someone has a, a little bit of testimony about it do you get it now so another thing we take notice is what creating user personal so develop user personal which are fictional representations of your target users based on research findings you know you try to like you know this one now you are not really meeting the user per se you are just trying to this more or less like an assumption an assumption do you get it now that it's represent the use the a target user do you get so user personals help designers empathize with users and make design decisions that align with their needs and goals do you get it now so another thing is that consider factors as demographics motivation and pain points when creating user personals see that we we ensure that we look after the user we are we we are user minded all right so let's look at number three so number three is empathy map empathy maps provide a visual representation of users thoughts feelings and actions do you see now it's it's provided it help us to know the users you know thoughts how they feel what they think about our products and you know where we need to improve on you get okay so number four is benefit of user research so there, there is benefit so the benefit is user user research helps designer make informed design decisions based on their real user need you see now it's it's going to help you to know that which you want to do it helps you to understand the user more, helps you to know what you want to do more. 
and what have you. So another thing is reduce the risk of developing products that don't meet user expectation. Yes, you see, I was making mention about that. So it really, 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 really helped me to 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 solve problems. There are a lot of problems for us to solve out there. There are still a lot of ideas of you know um a, a lot of ideas that we all need to come to and guess what one man cannot have it all right one man cannot have all the knowledge so there is there, there is improvement so another thing is user research enhances the overall user experience by uncovering pain points and opportunities for what improvement very simple just about user try to solve problems you see that we are all trying to solve problems in all of these things you see now we are not just trying to just design because we want to design you get so now you are saying that much more than you want to start designing how to be designing how to be creating things for phone and all of these things but really calm down there is so much for us for you to learn before you go into all of that, right? So yeah, you know, make research, analysis, data, you know, gather information, you know, and all of those things. See, this is a coming together. So a coming together of everything that you do, it's really, really going to help you. All right. So another thing is the fifth thing we're looking at in our class is information architecture information architecture so quickly let's take a preview of number four again so what can you say about user research quickly everybody can you do well to write that on the chat button what you really understand from this user research what it you do what user research is is for you okay is good everything you shall understood from the things i have said so far i really like to hear you and get feedback from everybody so let's go so i see you said i should change this slide change it to which one so sorry i'm just seeing your message i didn't get to see it on time so sorry about that Still waiting. I'm sure you guys are typing something. I'm sure I have wonderful students. I'm sure about that. Okay, so Adebi said, said that user research is carrying out surveys on the user's need or pain point of the user. Very good, very good, very good. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You deserve a thumbs up. Yeah, you deserve that, right? So I'm waiting for others. I'm waiting for Lord Kolumi. I'm waiting for Shagun. I saw Timila in now, right? Still available, still here. Okay. But then I think Timile came quite late, but then perhaps okay, Rakoli says user research helps us to understand user need and behavior. It helps us to be user minded. Yes, very good. It helps us gather users' opinions through service and questionnaire. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. 
Ah, I have wonderful students in my class. I have wonderful students in my class. Really, I have wonderful students in my class. I really, really do have a wonderful students in my class. All right, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting. So two out of how many? Two out of like five or six. So I'm waiting for Shagun, waiting for Timilei. Okay, Matthew just joined. Wow, don't worry. Yeah, perfectly fine. The class is being recorded and we can go back to it afterwards. But then we can see still too, even though we are almost rounding up. So I'm waiting for Shagun's reply. So even now, I'm sure you there's this kind of boldness that you must that I'm sure you're beginning to have now. I'm beginning to have now. Whenever they talk about you are you exercise, you now have something to say. Not just that, you know, the person is you are just about you know, designing, 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 but then you are able to say so much more. I actually have a friend is currently in Canada and He's not a UI designer, right? He's a UX designer. He, he, he makes research and then gives to the, to the company and then everybody works about it. And now, see, that's also very, very beautiful. So, which is also an interesting one. So Timila says that user research helps us to gather information, enough information. Yes, thank you. Enough information on the users. Okay, on the needs of the users so as to create a means to meet them through designs yes awesome 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 really i'm i'm actually very much impressed this is a really boost for me yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you for paying attention thank you for making the time worth it so quickly let's go to the last one we'll be treating today so which is information architecture so information architecture i all right plays a crucial role in designing intuitive and user-friendly interface let me take that again information architecture plays a crucial role in designing intuitive and user-friendly interfaces so this this one of the key thing about uh, information architecture is the fact that it helps you to know how you scale up your 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 content how you scale up everything in your designs okay based on the things that we found out from our user research okay this is the this is looking like the main thing everybody is complaining about okay all right these are everything should be do you get and what have you so it is through this means you are not going to I'm sure you guys will be wondering that way too. As a human, am I going to pack all of these things in your in my head? Yes. But then the thing is just that it's going to be a living thing in you. Yes. Sometimes I forget these things. Yes, but then I've practiced them. You know, when we begin to do life practicals, you begin to see the fact that all of these things are now playing out, you know, subconsciously. Do you get it now? So we now said that it involves organizing, do you see now, and structuring. That's the two keywords in information architecture is that it involves what? organizing and structuring content. Very simple, just like I said, to ensure what easy navigation and findability. So it means that let's say you get to a fintech app. What I mean by a fintech app is an application that deals with you know finance let's say i want to send money i shouldn't be looking for you know that's one of the two key things there are two key things that we look for or three key things we look for whenever we have a fintech app many of us have banks right so the first thing we look for is to send money another thing we look for is what balance another thing we look for is what um does expenses as part of you know record do you get it now so those are very very key things that 
as a user you tend to look for on that kind of web uh, application now so you should not design something that is going to be that is going to be complex let's say you carry you put send money into another page whereas it ought to be on the first page it, it ought to be the first things one of the first key things that everyone that comes to you that visit the application gets to see all right so information in architecture helps us in understanding all of these things do you get it now so let's let's know some of the key aspects in information architecture now so the first thing we're looking at is content organization you must be able to logically think and know how to place your you know your content so you must categorize them well and structure it perfectly well so another thing is create a hierarchy that reflects the what you see now the importance and relationships between different content elements so you must be able to you know hierarchy talks about levels levels ranks do you get it now based on the things that you have so it must be very very clear that you no know, users are not finding needs difficult to navigate all right so another thing is so you know that so let's go back a little bit you know that we have tons of fintech app right so imagine you as a as an upcoming ceo of a new fintech app that is coming up and then you know we have tons already we have fintech app like ope pampe you know and many more like that you know if you check all of them all of them have similar interface or almost the same interface just the just different colors nothing too special why it is because they know that each users have come across those their competitor apps before all right so they will not like to make it too difficult for their users to ensure that you know it's difficult that's why many at times you see that any app that is closely related or deals with something of the same category they try not to go too far from that which they are doing they ensure that what they are doing let's say more than let's say around 60 percent of the people that is going to be coming to their application have used other competitor apps before so they tend not to make theirs too difficult all right so another thing is navigation design so in navigation design it allows users to move seamlessly through interface let's say i want to pay money i should not look for you know send money too far you get you, you in navigating it you are ensuring that everything is fine so the reason why we will have good navigation is because there is content organization all right so it considers different navigation patterns such as menu breadcrumbs and you know, search functionality so everything you are looking for everything must be easy to find to find and remember we talked about it from the beginning about information architecture is that we must ensure what easy what navigation and findability never forget that so the third one is information hierarchy yes you need to understand this as a designer because not 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 everything is in, everything is needed but not all things are important do you get that everything is what needed but not all things are important do you get so because of that you'll be able to know the important ones so you are not going to so that means when you are designing you follow through hierarchy that means as whatever is the most important one should be the first thing the user sees and then keep going like that till you get to the least important ones all right so first just like when you first get to a website um let me try to show us a website let me try okay show me that responded so sorry about it i'm just saying it hey, let me read it out for everybody to see okay 
is that user research helps us to know and understand more about communication and skill we have to design. Yes, very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. Awesome, 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 awesome. So, um, what app can we look at? Uh, um, okay, let me try to use this. Okay. Uh, okay, let's try to use Google. Let's try to use Google. Google.com. Google yes. So, when, so let me quickly ask you, when you come to Google, what are you looking for? You are coming to search. Is that not true? Yes. So, in Google, very simple. They know that when you are coming, you are coming to, to search. So, you can see there that the first thing you are seeing is their, word, their name and what what you are looking for so it means you want to search for something do you get it now and then you see they now have this google search i'm feeling lucky they now have what translations do you see it now very simple interface then they have footer here then they have a number of things about blah 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 privacy and license those ones are less important you no know? imagine you can you compare let's say they put all of these things that is down up here and then they put which is up here down you see that's not really really nice even yourself you get tired about it so the first thing is what they search and then you search whatever you want to search do you get to and what have you so do you do you, do you get that now do you get it so and then we have that under information hierarchies that we yeah, use visual cues such as typography color and place and spacing to emphasize important elements so we use all of those things so don't worry all of these things you see the practical aspect of it and you really see the beauty of all the informations that you've been gathering all right so the fourth one is user flows user flows user flows user flows is very 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 important so on that user flow we represent the path user take to complete to to complete tasks to or achieve their goals or achieve their goals so another thing is identify potential pain point or obstacles in user flows and optimize them for a smoother user experience so another thing we look at in user flows is we use tools like flowchart or diagrams to visualize and communicate user flows effectively so what what is really like user flow user flow is what is going to like show to us how the user is going to take it through so i want to give us an assignment <laughs> i want to give us an assignment yes yes i would like you guys to you know play with your thought a little Can I go ahead to give us an assignment? <laughs> Can I go ahead? Oh, you didn't see. Wow, so sorry about it. So sorry. But can you see my screen back again now? ADBC and the um, Uluwak Polumi. Can you see my screen back? So can you guys see my screen back? So let me be sure. Oh, okay, I was trying to show us the Google app. Yeah, so sorry, I, I didn't take me. So I was saying that, can I give us an assignment? It's a very simple assignment. Very simple. Very simple assignment. <laughs> Nobody's responding. Nobody wants an assignment. Ah. 
Aquí no hay problema. Aquí, aquí. Aquí. So one person speaking for everybody. Toco. <laughs> uh, so my assignment is very simple. So I think, okay, give assignment, all right. So my assignment is very simple. So what is the difference between tax flow and user flow? Tax flow difference between mm, let me tax flow and user flow. So that's the assignment, and then we'll look at it tomorrow. That'll be the first thing we look at when we go when we come back tomorrow for class. So let's quickly round up. So, and then this is how this so when you do your assignment, you know what this is. <laughs> All right. So this is IA. What is the full meaning of IA? Everybody, what is the full meaning of IA? Yeah, let's wait. I'm waiting for you. What is the full meaning of IA? What is the full meaning of IA? What is the meaning of IE? What is the meaning of IE? Everybody, let me see if you guys, if you guys are paying attention. What is the meaning of IE? What is the full meaning of IE? So I'm waiting. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. So I didn't see what's the of IA. Shelgun, what's the formula of IA? Oluak, what's the formula of IA? Simple thing, IA. IA is not the, all right, very good. Information architecture, that is very, very awesome. Yeah, let me clap for you. <laughs> all right. So that's beautiful, 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 beautiful. So, so under IE, so these are the things that we look at. We look at what the user, we look at the context and the what the content, context and content. The two of them are different. Context, that's the write up and all of those things. And then the content is the things, the informations in the design. So We've come to the end of today's class. So tomorrow we'll be looking at visual design principles and then we'll keep moving little by little, little by little till we'll be done and then we can move straight to practicals and we can know how to create, you know, and solve problems. Remember, we are designing, you are what? You are solving problems. So I'm sure you guys had fun and you guys had a wonderful time learning today, right? Did you guys have time? Did you guys learn anything? I really did. It was really an awesome time. It was really an awesome time. So you imagine everybody that is not you know, in class, you see that they are missing a whole lot of things. And I'm sure that, yeah. So don't worry, I'm going to upload the video again tomorrow yes i'm going to upload the video again tomorrow are you getting me now sorry it's all right so thank you for coming tonight so we'll see you tomorrow again thank you so much